Hello guys and welcome. I hope that you're having a great morning or good day or good evening. My name is I play 4K, AK, I play 16K, AK, I play AK, AK, UHD Kink. During this video today, I'm going to show you Batman Arkham Asylum running 16K resolution with just single Titan RTX video card touring GPU architecture by NVIDIA and very old school server CPUs on 12 core 24 threads uh, that I purchased pretty cheap in 2020 and I recycled my motherboard from 4930K which was 6 core 12 threads using this server CPU and I'm using it at my uh, network rendering station network rendering firm so this is not the gaming uh, system but it's nice to see how the old school CPU will behave uh, with the top dock 2018 video card and still almost top dock in 2020 especially two of them nothing can beat it unless RTX 3090 uh, video cards in SLI two RTX 3090 in SLI can beat two Titan RTXs in SLI, but today I'm using only one Titan RTX, so we're going to have a look at only one Titan RTX. So I'm coming in real time, I'm not going to edit this video, everything which you're going to see the way it is, uh, I'm just going to recompress this video. This video is recorded with NVIDIA Shadow Play technology, so please add 3 FPS to the left top corner when I'm going to show you the gameplay. As again, this is a little introduction for about 3 minutes. And I'm not using the audio RTX that takes an additional 4 FPS. So um, I'm probably going to shut down my mic uh, during the gameplay uh, because it's going to be noisy. Or maybe, maybe, maybe I'm not going to shut down. But I just want to let you know, just add 3 FPS. This is exactly what it is. So first of all, the desktop is set to 16K resolution. How I achieve 16K resolution? It's 8K resolution native plus. Uh, DSR makes it uh, 16K resolution. This is going to be the first video of Batman Arkham Asylum running 16K resolution. So 15,360 pixels by 8,640 pixels, which is 133 megapixels, 133 million pixels. If you're going to multiply this, it's a little bit lower than that, 132.7, I believe, 0.5 almost. But anyways, 133 megapixels or 132 megapixels. This is how we're going to rock. Uh, as again, 8K resolution native with GSR. So pretty much it's going to render 16K resolution in real time. And then it's going to downscale, downscale the whole deal uh, to um, 8K resolution for me to see. But there is a big difference, guys, when I'm playing 8K resolution in this game, native versus 16K resolution downscale to 8K resolution. 16K resolution fills on another level. You can see all those details, more information. I'm not sure how they're doing it, but you can see it visually if you have a great vision. Do not listen to those folks that were saying in 2013 when I started with 4K as one of the first YouTubers that 4K is nonsense. And then they starting saying that 8K resolution is nonsense. Do not even listen to them. Those folks. those folks doesn't know the uh, mathematics and doesn't know the physics okay so they, they should be quiet all right so here we go guys um, well, right now it's running idling right now it's running idling keep your attention to pixel fill rate 169.9 gigapixels textual fill rate which it will increase as well which is 509.8 gigataxels and then bandwidth, which is 672 giga, gigabytes per second, this will increase. This is the bandwidth of our VRAM, of our video RAM, and it will increase because when I'm going to overclock VRAM additionally 2,000 megahertz. So Titan RTX VRAM comes with 14,000 megahertz at stock, and it's going to be overclocked during this video 16,000 megahertz. During this video, I'm going to show you all kind of different presets. I'm going to show you running stock. Um, frequencies but 100% fan rotation then I'm going to show you the maximum uh, stable overclock on air today Titan RTX is running on air without the uh, so, uh, without the liquid metal thermal compound paste that Titan RTX in my gaming system this one is completely stocked by NVIDIA but overclocked through the software please watch my uh, video on overclocking Titan RTX I'm going to pass you a great excellent information how to do it right 
not like those copycats so um i'm running 12 core 24 chats and if you're watching my channel this is probably a base but i decided to go ahead and show it to you how it's look like and then i'm going to show you another video where i'm just going to run only uh, enough cores to run the game and we're going to see uh, when it's going to run enough cores to run the game the frequency will be higher and the fps will be higher so it's not about the cores this is the the example to you it's about the frequencies of each course and if your overall cpu utilization is below 90 and you don't see 90 percent or 95 percent at all that means that windows operating system is not offloading some tasks some instructions or slow them down to slow down the fps that means that you will gain maximum fps at higher frequencies versus the more cores and this cpu is not overclockable it doesn't have unlock multiplier only i can overclock through the base clock bclk and uh, it's overclocked only by six megahertz additional otherwise after that it's unstable because bclk frequency um it's uh, it's not as good as mo uh, overclocking through the multiplier and it's crashing the system above six megahertz on this particular cpu okay uh this cpu will be uh same cpu as um 4000 series uh, if if you're going to run core amount same and frequency the same okay but this is the enterprise cpu i got it for 120 bucks on ebay used like new and i utilized my old school motherboard from 2015 my motherboard that i was running with four titan x maxwell gpu architecture and sli a uh, four-way and um utilizing that but i removed that 4930k that 49 30k was overclockable to 4.2 gigahertz by the way st stock stable uh and uh, this is the rendering firm as again this is not the gaming pc this is the rendering firm this is the experiment to show you uh, that it doesn't matter when you're running 8k resolution or above what is your cpu if it's high frequency you're great if it has enough of cores to run it in our case four cores will be more than enough to run this game it's great but the video card this is where your all your money if you're building gaming system should go not the ddr4 or ddr5 not the cpu not the greatest ever motherboard not the m.2 um ssds which is completely uh based of money but get yourself cheap as possible motherboard great cpu with enough cores be strategic as cheap as possible did you have uh, memory doesn't matter four or five but the video card you want to be strategic on that and invest all your money towards that if pc gaming is your key but this is the rendering firm and pretty much i'm um, do the video encoding and uh, sometimes 3d rendering on this system and 24 cores more than enough it's as fast as i9 9900k at five gigahertz uh, hair slower but i got the cpu for 120 dollars and i'm utilizing my old school parts so pretty much it cost me 120 bucks why not same almost the same as performance as i9 9900k overclock at 5 gigahertz and a little bit slower than that but anyways it's great so um the maximum possible display information at the left top will be available to you as you can see right here let me show you the font is nine otherwise it's not going it's going to show you some uh, percentage marks and it's not going to show you the text so this is the highest possible font size at 16k resolution um and um let me real quick go ahead and show you and wrap up with this introduction and we're going to jump into the game so motherboard f20 bias for the cpu is required you can download it from gigabyte website but install the cpu after you're going to flash the bias otherwise the cpu is not going to post it's going to be black screen and nothing will happen keep that in mind it's not going to work with the um, earlier biases so use the i7 borrow it from somebody install the f20 bias if you want to do the same if you're having the gigabyte x79 ud3 motherboard this is version 1.1 not 1.0 and you better stick with 1.1 if you want to run this CPU. I believe Xeon uh, 2697 V2 doesn't work on the Gigabyte X9, X79 UD3 version 1.0. Um, you, you, you can still can make it, but you gotta have a hack bias and stuff like that. So it's not for the regular user. But this is available for the regular user if you're going to use F20 bias from the March 19, 2014. 32 gigabyte DDR3 quad channel. This is 1800 memory. Um, ddr3 but uh, on this cpu on this particular cpu it doesn't want to go above 14,000 megahertz so and even at 14,000 megahertz it's 
after a couple days of running then it's going to freeze up into the blue screen so this is maximum possible stable frequencies as again Titan RTX right now running at stock with 24 gigabyte GDR6 by Samsung same GDR6 as on the RTX 2080 Ti so if it, it, VRAM utilization during my benchmark today at different kind of settings not going to pass above uh, 11.4 uh, gigabytes means that you can do the same thing with RTX 2080 Ti video card okay and this is how it benched as you can see with 24 threads it's only doing uh, as 14 almost 15 physical threads so only three gains physical cores so but we have like additional 12 threads should be like at least eight or six but it's only three so i just want to let you know so course it's not like what you think the higher frequency for the games is better cores are great when you need those cores when you're utilizing them at 100 percent like 3d rendering or video encoding but more about it is going to be on the different videos over the iplay4k.com or hdking.com youtube channel or iplay16k.com go ahead and check it out all right guys so let's go ahead and get it going i think i explained to you everything um i'm going to go ahead and uh run a steam run, by the way i'm the first gamer that's showing you batman arkham asylum um, at 16k resolution i'm going to open steam and uh, we're going to run this game armor 3 is coming guys in crazy resolution you don't want to miss it so it's going to open the window right yeah here we go it's open the window for us and in the game it doesn't have the resolution settings so what we gotta do um, we gotta set it over here through the settings this is how in particular game it's running Unreal uh, Engine and if I'm not mistaken it's running Unreal 3 Engine before the fourth and uh, it's not Unreal 2 it's Unreal 3 I believe all right, so 15,360 pixels by 8,640 uh, pixels, 16 divided by 9 perfect aspect ratio. This is the future, uh, seven year, uh, years from now. Uh, as again, I achieve it with 8K resolution native screen plus DSR 4X. Um, and this is what's up. Uh, my shadow play is hacked as well, and it's recording in 8K resolution at 60 FPS. So it's going to be, it's recording right now. I uh, hack it through the, um, system RAM debug tool and you can I just change the values and uh, it's recording it so it's working um, all right guys so motion blur will be off ambient inclusion will be no and then I'm going to enable it so I'm going to run um, three tests I'm going to run or let me run actually four tests I'm going to run two tests without the ambient inclusion um, stock and then with the ambient occlusion stock and then oh, maximum overclock on air plus 100 megahertz on the GPU and plus 2000 megahertz on the VRAM stock uh, which is the ambient occlusion no and ambient occlusion yes okay so we're gonna have a look if, 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 if it's going to be playable but it is going to be playable and it's playable like nice which is amazing it's not like four Titan X Maxwell's but let me go ahead and start it I think we're good to go I'm probably not going to shut down the mic let's see how it's going to go yeah we'll try not to shut down the mic let's go ahead and smash that play button let's see how it's going to go. so this is at the left the maximum possible scenario for the phone size the information system as you can see I'm running it in win window mode uh, somehow it's uh, flicking the shaders in the full screen because it's very old game engine beautiful the way it, it means to be played nvidia it is what it is i'm not sure what, what is the amd is doing but amd cannot introduce to us 8k resolution and i'm already rocking 16k resolution since 2016 when uh it was available for purchase for purchase for titan x maxwell gp architecture and right now we're on another level when i was running maxwell gp architecture video card guys um in a lot of games at 8k resolution it was giving me kind of some scenario like um 
it's kind of a little bit like a bluey slow mo in a lot of games at AK Resolution. It's changed that uh, with the Pascal GPU architecture, which is Titan X, the first revision version 1.0 Pascal GPU architecture, or Titan XP's second generation of Titan Pascal GPU architecture. It changed that and was running almost smooth, but during GPU architecture, the next one after Pascal is running smooth 16K resolution, not even 8, but 16K resolution. And uh, it wasn't possible um, to run this game 16K resolution with the 4 Titan X Maxwell GPU architecture. Unfortunately, I didn't try it with the uh, a 2 or 4. I had 4 Titan X piece, but 4 Titan X piece was uh, flickering the shaders in SLI in a lot of games. So 2 uh, Titan X piece pretty much was supported perfectly, but not 4. 4 was with a lot of tricks, and uh, it, it wasn't running uh, properly in a lot of games, like Crisis 3. Like those guys, Toy he AR, he showed you 4 Titan X, uh, Titan X piece and SLI, but he never told you that uh, during the in-game animation, the shadows are flickering. He didn't let you know that, guys. He was showing you the levels that didn't flicker. And this is misinformation. I don't like people like that. I like showing you the, 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 the real deal. So, as again, the purpose of this video is not the gameplay. The purpose of this video is to show you the beautiful benchmark. And a lot of people do not get uh, stuck on the RTX 3090. Man, where is the RTX 3090? Where? I gotta show the Titan RTX as well, because a lot of people will buy this Titan RTX, guys, in 2021 for 350, 450 bucks. And they can buy four of them, and they can stick with four of them all the way till huh? 2025 without an issue. Keep that in mind. As you can see, this game is still amazing. This is the first version of the Batman on PC that was running on real game engine, and it's, the visuals are amazing. Especially when you're playing this game at 8K resolution. I also will try to record at 8K resolution, but when you're playing this game at 8K resolution and above, this game is rocks, even in 2020, guys. The, the visuals and everything is amazing in this game. Just want to let you know. All right, so this is what's up, right? You saw the FPS at the left top. As again, 27 FPS, around 27 FPS, 29 toy, it depends, it was jumping, but pretty much it was above 30 FPS for sure, without the ambient occlusion maxed out, with the maximum physics and everything. See those effects coming from the uh, ceiling? It's all the physics, guys. And it, it, some people will remember when it took like additional video card to run it for the single video card by NVIDIA, but not anymore, any longer, not anymore, I believe since Titan Pascals, and Titan Turing is completely, or not even Titans, but as again, Turing or Pascal GP architectures, uh, GTX 1080 Ti was a beautiful video card, especially the Gigabyte, Water Force Edition for the cool, amazing, two of them in SLI, and I had two of them in SLI, it was amazing, uh, I had one Water Force Edition, and it's beautiful, guys. As you can see, you're going to enjoy a lot. <laughs> and if you're curious, if you have the AK Resolution TV with the DSR working on it or DSR hacked, because again, it's going to render 16K resolution on your AK Resolution TV, and it's going to look much better than AK Resolution. You can tell the difference, trust me. And uh, let me zoom in for those naysayers to show you, look at this, 800%. Let me go a little bit lower than that. 500%, this is 400%, even 400% is more than 16K resolution. Don't I mean more than 32K resolution, 400%. Because 16K resolution, 200% will take 32K. Or, 4x total, 2x on width and 2x on height. Look how beautiful everything. The texture is so detailed. What people doesn't understand, 16K resolution doesn't break the textures like those naysayers. None. 
it just bring on another level it because it's completely loading the textures, all the details without everything washed out. And this is 400%. This is 200%, guys. This is how the 30... Uh, actually, this is 200%. It doesn't look as 32K as you can see. It's looking like a half of that. So maybe, yeah, 400% is 32K resolution. But this is like 24 K probably resolution. Look at this. See all those details are there. When you're running even 4K resolution, those little details, those little textures, and those little 3D meshes, they're not loading completely with all the details. Especially 1080p, you're losing a lot of pixels throughout those textures, like a lot. All right, guys. I think we had fun. I cannot change the um, options in the game. Unfortunately, it just doesn't have that options. Let me show it to you. So I gotta, I gotta pretty much reload the game. We're gonna reload the game, and I'm going to enable the a a ambient occlusion. This is kind of running uh, idling with the driver to control. I believe this game is supposed to have a test benchmark. Not this one. The next Batman will have a benchmark. All right, that's fine. So idling, okay. So around 35, but sometimes jumping below 30, but not in the game in the menu. Um, right now, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to enable. I'm going to enable the. Let me open the Steam. I'm going. To on 8K resolution, guys, TV, you gotta sit very close to the screen if you're running 16K at 100% to see everything. I gotta load it. Every time we load it, it's fine. We, we can do that. All right, so ambient occlusion now will be, yes, will decrease the FPS. But let's go ahead and have a look how it's going to feel. Okay, it's running now. On the idling. Not the idling, but uh, the technique takes control with the drivers. Like uh, the noise level controlled with the drivers, the frequencies controlled with the drivers, the turbo boost controlled with the drivers. But then I'm going to force it through the um, overclocking, through the software overclocking which is must to do for anyone do not be afraid but as again you're doing it on your own risk and expenses but do not be afraid uh, because you're going to increase for free the performance and uh, those misinformers naysayers that tells you oh you're gonna kill your video cards and stuff like that most of them came from the YouTube channels that misinform you badly and um, okay what is the game and those people picked up okay it's, it was in the background all right so um they misinformed and unfortunately it's a bad thing culture misinformed people and i believe it's driving the commerce but this is a very bad thing they don't want to be misinformed over my youtube channel you will receive the true best from the best without the misinformation all right guys i'm not selling anything and uh, my point is, yeah, there is no benchmark. My point is to show you this though. Look how everything is so beautiful. On his face, I can see every single um, skin border. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful details. I forgot to tell you how the Batman look is. This is the, th um, the low poly uh, model 3D mesh, but, but when you're increasing uh, AK resolution and above, and comparing it with 1080p or 4k resolution even the 3d meshes guys while they're rendering with more pixels on the screen because everything which is rasterized in the end of the day and rendering is the pixels it feels like higher polygons model look at this this game so old it's 10 years old look at that model amazing when running 16k resolution and even 8k resolution not so bad 32 33 Move it. 34 so in the game it's above why does he need the doctors 
Utilization of the GPU ninety nine percent. This is exactly what we want to be. We want to utilize our GPU as high as possible. Ninety nine percent of hundred is a max. Hundred is a max. And we want to utilize our CPU as low as possible Can't if you're running low try, on the baby. CPU cores. But right now I'm not running low on CPU cores, but I will try to record you a second video, guys. I'll show you the second video um, when I'm going to run just, as you can see, 10% utilization, 8% utilization. That means the two cores will be good enough, good enough to utilize it. And that means... Uh, or maybe three cores. Three cores for sure will be good enough to utilize it and not even get to 95% on three cores. And three cores can run at 3.5 gigahertz on this CPU because the two baboos controlled automatically. Ah, stop your crying or I'll show so 24 you when you're looking really with a lot of details. Of course, when you're not looking straight to the skies, which will increase the FPS like wow. But when we're looking like down, it's decreasing to 24, as you can see. So it's not with the ambient occlusion, so it's not above 30. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Let me get into the fight and we will go ahead and switch it. Hopefully, guys, you enjoying that. Because I'm explaining a lot of information, and I know for some people who knows that, but not a lot of people knows that. A lot of new people watching that. 16K resolution is very rare, guys. You will see those copycats copy my benchmark YouTube channel. They call it benchmark this, benchmark that, and then they will copy the 16K resolution. But the problem is, you can see the fake after watching the true 16K resolution videos over my YouTube channel. You can see the true. Flake him. Okay, guys, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta escape. They don't want to but that's the thing not about the gameplay. Because you can play, you can enjoy. It's beautiful. So you saw the FPS, right, guys? All right, this is the idling. This is when you're not going to hear any fans. But right now, the fans are going to start kicking. I'm not going to shut down my mic. I just want to, um, pretty much explain to you what is going on on the screen because a lot of people probably not understanding what is going on on the screen i will try to cover the next batman after that before the Ar arkham knight was available arkham knight is heavy and i believe it was built with the unreal engine 4 or the latest revision of unreal engine 3 and it's kind of heavy hopefully i also going to show you uh the um sli versions two Titan RTX as an SLI and see the FPS, keep that in mind, you can do it as well. So what we're gonna do now, we shut it down, we're gonna go and we're gonna open the Steam, um, okay, okay, let's see, it should be on the background, right? Nope, it's not. And um, I'm going to start with the ambient occlusion, I'm going to start with the ambient occlusion on, Let me click play button. But now we're going to a little bit tweak it. Let me bring it real quick. One second, guys. One second. Let me bring it to show you the difference when Titan RTX is overclocked, what we got here. And the difference is like day and night. Uh, but it feels like day and night, but it's not. Actually, it's when your FPS is below 60, your gain will be like 3-5 FPS. When your FPS is around 30 FPS average, your gain will be like 2-3 FPS with the overclock. And when your FPS is 90, 100 FPS average without the overclock, your gain will be about 5, uh, about 7-10 FPS. This is what overclock brings you, but it still brings you guys. At least 10%. Why not? Why not to use it? So, um, pixel fill rate 169.9, textual fill rate 509.8, and then it's 672 gigabytes, right? Watch that. Check it out. I'm going to go the maximum safest on air for this particular video card. 100% fan rotation is going to go noisy, but 
you probably can hear the noise now because I'm recording with dual professional mics a lot of people was complaining so I got myself dual professional mics um, this video by the way I'm when it's going to go to the YouTube will be re-encoded using FFmpeg++ the freeware application that I'm developing right now and it's going to decrease the NVIDIA shadow play size by two with the same quality okay I came up with something nice and in later on I will integrate the artificial intelligence into the FFmpeg++ for you so FFmpeg++ software guys developed by UG King you don't want to miss that so pixel fill rate 179.5 increased by 10 gigapixels per second pixel uh, texture fill rate increased by about 30 gigapixels per second plus and bandwidth 768 gigabytes increased by almost 100 gigabytes per second almost running like RTX 3090 uh, this is unbelievable okay and uh, RTX 3090 is running much better VRAM keep that in mind so um yeah let's let's go ahead and uh, get it going I guess guys right um, everything is rock I'm running right now let me as, as again to demonstrate you for those naysayers I'm running or for the people who skipped the video I'm running with the ambient occlusion yes maxed out and then it's going to be fifth benchmark guys when I'm going to show you how I would run it Maxed out and kind of maxed out. Just tweak it a little bit for the higher FPS. Nvidia. Beautiful. As again, when you're running 8K resolution and 16K resolution in a window mode or even 4K resolution, it's pretty much an SLI. It's pretty much doesn't matter for two video cards. Uh, such as during GPU architecture or even Pascal, I believe, GPU architecture, it doesn't matter. It's still going to perform very well, like in full screen. Maybe, maybe by 2 FPS down, maybe, but not in all the games that they tested. Maybe in some old school games. Keep your eye guys on FPS even during the loading screens and stuff. You're gonna see the difference immediately. Look at his skin, look at this details, every single pixel right here. Guys, please watch this video on YouTube in 8K resolution. The game, by the way, is amazing. It's cheap, you can pick up this game for about one, two dollars. It's cheap, it's amazing. If you want to play something, plus it's going to run on a lot of laptops and desktops right now that was purchased in 2018, 2020 with a decent above 60 fps even at uh, 1080p Get off of me. on very bad Just computers that doesn't have a great video cards Move it. Okay, okay. look at this 37 38 39 40 we just saw 41 doctors? 42 I've got to say this is with the um, ambient occlusion what is the ambient occlusion pretty much ambient occlusion making our character is much better I probably should show you at the beginning the character so what it does it's kind of like outline shadows in photoshop so around 2d mesh it's kind of doing the kind of shadow kind of effect darkish if you're an artist that drawing with the pencil you probably will know it what it is and it's kind of give you that illusion of better outline model with kind of better grading to it and the uh, light position it's kind of fakeish of the light position Ambient inclusion is probably uh, not a great thing to use with the ray tracing because pretty much ambient inclusion is made to fake the refraction and the refraction and shadows. He's up there. I'm up. Okay, of course. This is a Batman guy. This game is beautiful. So missed that. And it's amazing. It has a great storyline. It's like a cartoonish, guys. It's like a cartoon. You're gonna love it. It's a cartoonish, as you can see, rendering almost. Beautiful. As again, 25 FPS right now. And over there was like 23. So, like I told you. Trust me guys, I already benched it for myself and recorded the FPS. 
without, but I'm going to show it to you real quick. It's 2 3 FPS with or without the recording. 2 3 FPS. Let me put to the point when the FPS will be kind of stable and I'm going to demonstrate it to you. So, right now, see that 46 FPS? Uh, jumping, jumping. We want to get to the point when it's not. 40, okay, here we go. 48 FPS. It's not jumping, it's kind of stable ish. This is with overclock with the ambient occlusion, right? So, what I'm going to do now. I'm going to bring it back to stock, okay? And uh, we're gonna get back to the game. In the menu, it's lower than that, but in the game, it's gonna boost up. What do they want? <laughs> Forty-four. Forty-four FPS stock on idling. Forty-three, forty-four. So again, following my rules, if the average FPS before the overclocking was 30, the increase will be 2, 3 FPS. If it was 60, the increase will be 3-5 FPS. If, if it was 90 before the overclocking, 90-100, the increase will be 7-10 FPS. The higher FPS average you have before the overclock, the better the overclock will be. But pretty much it's just a percentage anyways. But some people doesn't understand the algebra yet. So, we're gonna get back to the game and switch from the menu. So 44 it was. I'm at the door. Look at this. Nothing here. 46, 48. So two, four FPS increase. Amazing for free, for free. And this is without liquid metal thermal compound paste. But do not invest. Uh, do not waste your money in water cooling, guys. On the Titan RTX. Uh, even the Gator home water cooling will cost you around $200. It's a vase. Uh, and uh, worry, improvements will be like 1 2 FPS. Yes, they're going to run a cooler. This is for those people that panicking. But it's not going to give you that FPS. Maximum 2 FPS extra for $200 is just a vase of money. You only want to waste your money on the water cooling, even the home Gator setup. Um, on Titan RTX when you're running two of them and uh, the secondary Titan RTX can run on air but the first one the closest to the CPU should be on water otherwise they're going to thermal throttle okay and thermal throttling start, starting on Titan RTX above 70 Celsius so right now they are really thermal throttling so with the overclock it should be above 2000 megahertz but right it's, it, as you can see it was like 1940 megahertz so it's already thermal throttle itself by 80 but still overclock showing the higher frequency on over all the GP, GPU frequency hopefully guys this makes sense as again all 24 threads was running 38 e, 30, 3180 megahertz per each core 8% sometimes 10, sometimes even 12% uh, percent of the overall CPU utilization means that four cores will be more than enough to run it and four cores is only 3.4, uh, 300 megahertz higher so maximum we can gain I'm not going to show it to you probably but I'm going to uh, tell you how it is after my tests and stuff like that because I'm with Titan uh, RTX already over one year and I test a lot of games so overall 300 megahertz additional on over overclock not gonna give us much maximum 2 FPS additional okay so you can go to the bias of motherboard shut down the hyper trading technology to eliminate all the fantasy and virtual cores and bring to the physical physical and then turn down even the physical sum to get the latency delay faster and uh, in hope 300 mega is gonna give you a, a two FPS and it's it's gonna give you one FPS for sure maybe two if you're gonna get lucky okay you can do that and it's going to run cooler on CPU but CPU is running very cool I'm today I'm using the H100i Pro I believe third gen it's a Pro XT just like on the picture so guys this is what's up this is with the ambient inclusion on let me, and you saw I was fighting, and 30 FPS when I'm looking at the ground, 27, not 25, 20 is go to 27, look at this, this is, this is beautiful, just a beautiful result, and it's free, it's free, you don't need to do anything, just additional 4 FPS, but average will be like 3 FPS additional through the overclock. 
All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you without the anti uh, without the ambient occlusion, and then we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Hopefully, guys, you're enjoying this video. Don't forget to smash that like button to support me because a lot of time, money, energy was invested. You know, I'm wasting a lot of money, energy, just to showing you. But hopefully, I'm going to bring a value to to you, to all the gamers, to the people that are buying the used products on eBay in 2021, 2022. If you're watching, just go ahead and smash that like button, guys. Positive comments, motivate me, support me, subscribe, subscribe for more great videos. I'm the the person that 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 going to bring the value into the world. I'm not one of those copycats. I'm not one of those people with a lot of money that's going to be de de depressed or something like that. I better to invest and to create something. And plus, I'm going to invest and create something, and I'm going to develop my own game. As I told you, I'm a software developer, graphic designer, 3D artist, system engineer. So I have all this knowledge around that I'm sharing with you, and a lot of people already uh, found it helpful. Hopefully you, you're going to find it helpful as well. Don't forget to smash that like button, guys. Support me. So um, it is what it is. Now what we're going to do, now we're going to run it again. Now we're going to run it again. And uh, without the ambient inclusion, without those fake shadows around the 3D object, kind of fake lighting. I'm not a big fan of it, but... If you can run maxed out, why not, right? Okay, where is the thing? Got him. Losing the thing. Settings. Guys, I'm apologizing about the noise because, as again, the computer is in the same room and the room is back. So Titan RTX is still very noisy. So if they saying RTX 3090 is 20% quieter than Titan RTX, it's going to be still going to be noisy, guys. But uh, two Titan RTX as noisy as single Titan X Maxwells. This is I can tell you for sure. <laughs> this one and uh, almost uh, as noisy as single Titan XP's Pascal GP architecture. Okay, so ambient occlusion is off. I'm going to show it to you like that. And then one more last test. I'm probably going to show you uh, what we're going to cut it here. Nothing. There's nothing we can cut. Maybe without the physics, I'm going to show you. But it doesn't matter. Physics for Turing GP architecture, it's nothing. Even the Pascals was eating it like nothing. And uh, even the Turing GP architecture, the anti-aliasing feature, maximum like 10 FPS or 7 FPS. Before, when we were using Titan X, even Maxwell did that actually during that time, I remember it was like almost the half FPS was cut. Alright, where is our game? I think it's in the background. Alright, so this is without the ambient occlusion, is again everything mixed out with the physics and everything. And then I'm going to turn down the physics, the tour test, and I'm going to show it to you. But I, I, I better play this game with physics. The, this game with physics is nice, they made a the great physics. Not like in Mafia 2, kind of fakeish. Over here is nice. Hopefully, the next Batman after that one, um, going to be guys beautiful, because it has the benchmark. So we'll have a better figures. I'm going to just bench at that benchmark. I remember uh, that four Titan X Maxwell couldn't couldn't run above 8K resolution. The next Batman after that, still was on Unreal 3. Maybe they fixed that. I didn't test it with XP's, Titan XP's, but we're going to test it with the Titan RTXs, and we're going to find out. Look at my FPS, guys. 60 FPS. Oh! Off of me. 60 FPS. 16K resolution. AMD is like what? Why does he need And as you can see, it's below 16 gigabytes. Below 16,000 megabytes. My, my VRAM usage right now is 15,097 megabytes at the left top corner. Almost 16,000, but still below that. Very low latency delay as well. I really like it. That six megabytes on the uh, Turing GP architecture brought our latency delay to almost minimum, and I heard that Ampere GP architecture will be on another level. Makes sense, but it's going to be on another level in all kind of ways because they utilize it right. They made it right. Nvidia made it right. So it's going to use less of the um, storage. Less of the system RAM, 
and more of the VRAM and uh, the latency delay in milliseconds will be as low as possible. Keep in mind that milliseconds by the FPS, latency delay we want to keep as low as possible. So I'm watching at the ground, 35. <laughs> this is, watching? guys, how probably I would play it without the ambient occlusion, with the 8K resolution native. Uh, with the 16k resolution um, DSR. But still, guys, I can tell the difference when you're running 8k versus 16k. Keep in mind that on this system, I'm probably going to show you 8k resolution as well, recorded. And when you're using Techno RTX to play 4k resolution or 1080p, it's pretty much wasting of your money. Titan RTX or RTX 3090 video card is in 8k resolution. And single Titan RTX is a bad, bad idea because it's not going to utilize properly at 1080p. It's not going to utilize the shadow cores properly. And even 4K resolution is not going to utilize properly. You're still going to waste a lot of shader cores, so Titan RTX will be acting like RTX 2080 Ti. But Titan RTX is made to run two of them in SLI. Because I'm running the project SLIRAD.com. One of my projects when I'm going to share with you some great tips about the SLI and stuff like that and uh, hopefully very soon it's going to be available I didn't see a lot of support by you but I'm going to share a lot of tips how to enable the SLI in a lot of games that uh, was not supported by the NVIDIA that were not supported by the NVIDIA a lot of those games so beautiful I showed you on the ground fight I showed you guys everything what you need to know right let me let me let me get to the ground, but pretty much it's just going to be the same. It's just going to be the same. Ain't hospital supposed to be clean? This place and when you're not looking from the top, actually FPS will be above 30 as you saw. Because you're going to you're not gonna cover a lot of 3D meshes that are going to be computed through the Titan RTX. A lot of shaders, techniques. Because when you're looking at the top, pretty much I was covering a lot of those folks. It's beautiful, guys. All right, so what we're gonna do now? But look at that character, 16 uh, for the last time. Check it out. I can see that he was just shaped today. Beautiful, even without the uh, ambient occlusion. So that ambient occlusion creating some sort of like a dark shades around the 3D meshes. It doesn't have that. But it's still the the lighting is so great in this game even without the ambient occlusion. This is probably how I play this game. And enjoy it. With the 60k resolution maxed out completely. But ambient occlusion is kinda off. Alright guys, without the physics for those naysayers, we're gonna see right now. It's going to be an experiment. And then we are moving on. So I'm going to run it again and shut down the physics. But as I told you, physics is like nothing for the Titan RTX, but let's go ahead and shut it down. Off. Details, of course, we want to keep very high textures, we want to keep very high, otherwise, what's the point to run 16K resolution? Textures and 3D meshes should be at maxed out, so we're going to enjoy that, right? But, uh, you know, just for the purpose of the benchmark, maybe lower, lower will be nice. So let's go ahead and have a look at this one right now. So physics, off, oh, ambient occlusion, off, oh, everything maxed out, 16K resolution. Skype kind, uh, not the Skype, I mean Steam is kind of over uh, on top of the game. It's acting very nice, guys. I remember when I was running four Titan X Maxwell GPU architecture in 8K resolution in the next game after this game, the next Batman, I forgot, Arkham something, but not Arkham Knight, it was the third one. That one is kind of heavy. Uh, but before the Arkham Knight game, I was running at Arkham City probably, I forgot the name, and... Um, AK resolution for Titan X Max LGP architecture, guys. It was like that feeling of kind of slow mo while you're playing it. Kind of bluey, a little bit sometimes bluey slow mo, even without the blur, but kind of not bluey. I don't know how to explain to you, but during GP architecture at 16K, that was for Titan X Maxwell's uh, video cards in SLI 4 way, uh, running AK resolution in that game. 
Over here is 16k resolution without anything. And I believe it was the issue with the second level cache on the GPU. Over here is six megabytes. That's more than enough. Pascal's was uh, two megabytes. Maxwell's was even more. Guys, you watching not the copycats. All those YouTubers, they're just copying each other, copying each other, copying each other. I'm pretty sure that there is, is going to be some channels that is going to start copying my 16K resolution uh, experience. But you know who was the boss on above 8K resolution, rendering in real time. Because right now it's still rendering 16K resolution. And all what I need to have just a 16K resolution display and FPS will be the same, maximum two, uh, Plus two, minus two FPS, keep that in mind. So it's a real deal, look at this, looking beautiful. But as again, physics is kind of destruction and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and have a look. We didn't improve in terms of our FPS. Why does the GPU utilization kind of lower. I've got to say 96 I saw, 98. Went down a little bit, by one or two percent. 37 FPS, looking 33, nice with a lot of details, a lot of people walking here, a lot of 3D meshes, a lot of 3D polygons on the screen rendering, and then there is some shaders and textures, this is how uh, game engine is built, the, the, okay guys, so, 35, we kind of lower on FPS a little bit, I didn't see that 60, when I was walking to this, without the ambient occlusion, we kind of lower an FPS without the physics. That's strange. Let, let me get to the ground, but it, it it seems to me that FPS is about five FPS lower without the physics. With the physics, we were like five FPS higher. Let let me get to the ground. Let me let me get this thing down. He's over here. Wait here. Safe yet. Time to time, time, time to go sleep. Hmm? Still about 40. But I believe that uh, without uh, with when physics was maximum on with maximum features, we were a little bit higher by about three, four FPS. At least this is how it felt to me. I'm not sure if it's the same to you. As you can see, without the physics, we still have some distractions. But as again, oh it's not, and it's coming from here. the ceiling too. So it's still here, it just doesn't matter. Physics on or physics off. In I'm some of up. the effect, it will matter. But uh, as you can see, to, to enjoy the game, you don't need to have physics on. What are we gonna do now? It's almost the same visuals. It's going to be a little bit uh, like a paper flying on We're the ground in the city when you're gonna go with physics. But destruction is still here even without the physics. Like this newspaper is flying Aging on the ground. Bat. This Aging physics will bring that. Especially in the next Batman bat after that. Room. Look at my uh, subtitles, so small. Alright guys, that that's pretty much it. That that's it. That's it. Beautiful Batman. A lot of games coming. AK 16K and Titan RTX. A GTX 1080 Ti, four Titan X Maxwells, two Titan XPs, four Titan XPs, um, and RTX 3090s and RTX 3090. And that's a lie coming to iplay4k.com or iplayak.com or iplay16k.com or uhdk. Don't miss it. It's going to be a beautiful um, time. You want to watch it while PC gaming is still alive because I believe 2027 PC gaming will be dead. It will be replaced by the mobile devices. And I was saying that not just because the NVIDIA just purchased one month ago the ARM. CPUs that use heavily in the our cell phones and iPads and stuff like that not just because of that I was saying that even in uh, 2019 Before this ever happened and I believe 2027 the arm will replace the PC gaming and Nvidia will create an advanced arm with 3d layer technology and uh, This is what, what's going to happen and that 3d layer technology will bring the gaming on another level even right now the let's say a 13 chips iPhone um, 11 um, and iP iPad Pro 
the next one that will come out uh, in the end of 2020 are cannot be stressed enough completely that not going to show you experience below uh, 60 FPS and uh, very soon it's going to be re and I believe the mobile devices such as um, a chips bionic chips by Apple is four or five years um, behind the PC gaming four or five years and it's shorting shorting and shorting very soon it's going to be two years with the a14 chips and three years of with a14 chips a15 chips will make two years and a17 a18 chip will be the time when you're not going to play any more PC gaming it's going to be very kind of exotic for those uh, people that kind of still playing the old Nintendo consoles and stuff but most of the people will switch and uh, to iPads and iPhones and you can connect it to the HDMI bundle and to any TVs and enjoy it, right? Hopefully guys you enjoyed this video. Uh, before I will let you go, let me show you also, let me show you one, one more thing. One more thing before I will let you go, let me show you the IDA. I, I know guys that you want to see the IDA, right? Let me show you real quick the IDA. So the information about the system. Uh, because this is an informational video I don't want to make it so fast but I want to provide as much value as possible so overclock BCLK 106 this is the maximum of this motherboard uh, for this um, e, uh, Xeon E5s uh, which featuring um, 2600 uh, series you cannot overclock at above 106 stable keep that in mind with multi cores Ivy Bridge EX so this is the limitation, the maximum possible thing. So um, it was running, it's saying 3286, but actually it was uh, completely at 100%, when you, not, even, not even when it was heavy at 100%, it was running 3,180 3, megahertz. This is how it was running in any games, unless I'm going to shut down some cores, and uh, we're going to see increase in the uh, frequency starting since, let me show it to you actually, starting since, over here table increase in frequency will start with a six not six core but five cores 31 multiplier will be used so pretty much they like when you're running the desktop CPUs you putting the different multiplier this is how you overclock your CPU over here it's locked okay they, they do not allow us to do that because people will overclock it to five gigahertz or four gigahertz and have still very amazing system imagine this CPU overclock to 4.5 it's probably going to be as fast as Ryzen and purchase it for 120 in 2020. But unfortunately, Intel envisioned that and they're greedy, they lock it. Very great boost will start with two cores with 34 multiplier. The frequency will be just because through my overclock, I have 200 megahertz additional frequency on any kind of scenario. So it's going to be 3.6 gigahertz. That one, 400 megahertz boost will give you at least two FPS, okay? And so you can pretty much record with shadow play and enjoy and compensate with the shadow play at 2 FPS, 2, 3 FPS, all right? So this is kind of instruction this CPU is supported. Let me go ahead and show it to you guys real quick. Okay, what's, okay, here we go. For those who's curious, for those who want to build the same system, I'm not advising you to build the same system, guys. If I would build the system, I will probably go with AMD right now if for the workstations. But as again, if you have the money, if you don't have the money, go with version V3. V3, uh, they still have better prices for 24 threads. When I purchased that, the V3 uh, was higher prices. Right now, in 2020, in the end of 2020, beginning of 2021, V3 version of 2600 CPUs, Xeons, E5s will be cheap. And if you have the old school motherboard from 2017 that's going to support that, go ahead and get it. 2011 socket go ahead and uh, v3 not v1 this is 2011 v1 all right guys so this is the supported instructions for those who is curious and then here's the motherboard here's the memory here's the chipset intel uh, petsburg x79 which is recognized for this bias ivy bridge ep was running 256 bit on my memory channel quad channel okay and here's the benchmark.
in yellow will be uh, this computer bench without anything, without the shadow play. It's completely bench raw without anything in the background. And then green will be my previous system and my system that I own. You can see the differences. And then blue will be somebody else. Okay. Look at that. I'm 11 CBLA in the memory because I'm running 1200, below 1200 megahertz. It's not even 1200 megahertz to keep it stable. But it's stable, it can run the like some months without the shutdown. Of course, I'm going to do it, but without any blue screen. It's not overloading that system where I'm like it was at 1400 megahertz. 1400 megahertz is the fastest possible megahertz you can run on this particular CPU. It doesn't like anything above 1400 megahertz DDR3. All right, guys, showed you everything what you need to know. Hopefully, guys, you enjoyed that because certainly I did. And you learned a lot during this video. I provided a lot of multi-angle information, multi-angle value to you. Don't forget to smash that like button right now. I'm putting some great videos for you to see. Subscribe, and I will see you guys till the next time.